Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to use your TI Inspire to draw the normal curve when running a Z test in your calculator. So what we have here is we have the null and the alternative, and we also have all of the important statistics that we need in order to run the test. The purpose of this video is not to show you the proper mechanics of a hypothesis test. It is to show you simply how to draw the normal curve in your graphing calculator. I will put a link to show you how to run through the entire um, Z test where you have showing the conditions, showing all of your work for your standardized test statistic, and interpreting your decision in context. So for this one, simply my purpose of making this video is to show you how to get your calculator to draw the normal curve, and it shows you how to shade the p-value. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our calculator and basically we're going to put in all the information right here that we have on this screen. Our mu naught is going to be whatever the mean is in the null and the alternative hypothesis. This we're going to put in for our population standard deviation, which is why we're running the z-test because of the fact that we know sigma and not s. If we knew s, we would run the t-test. X bar is our sample mean, N is our sample size, and alpha is what we're going to compare our p-value to to help us make our decision. And we do want to have a two-tail test on this one because it's not equal, so that when we shade our p-value, we will shade both tails. Okay, so let's grab the calculator, and what we're going to do is typically if you're just running the test and you want to get your p-value and all of your important information, you would add a calculator. But this time I want to draw it. So to draw it, I have to choose option four, add lists and spreadsheet. And then I'm going to go to menu and statistics, and I'm going to choose option four, stat tests. And then I'm going to pick the correct test. In this case, like I said, we want the Z test. And we would use data if we had information to actually plug into the spreadsheet. So like if you had a bunch of information to plug into a list, then you would go ahead and plug it into here and then you would use data. Since we don't have that, we have the stats, we're going to choose stats here and click OK. And then we're just going to start plugging in our information. Remember our mu naught was 920. It's going to ask for the population standard deviation next, which was 18, and then our sample mean, which is 923, and n is 50, and our alternative in this case was not equal to, so we're going to leave that the same. This is just where it's going to put the results. It's just going to put it in column B, and we want to draw it this time where it shades the p-value, and we're going to click OK. So what we have here is, for me, it's really hard to read this screen since it's so squished, squished together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control and Plus. I mean, sorry, Control and Up, not Control and Plus, Control and Up. And then I'm going to hit Control and Menu, and I'm going to ungroup these. And then this way I have them on two separate screens so I can see the data a lot easier. I can see where I'm going to shade. I can see that my Z is 1.17. It's centered at zero. This is one standard deviation, two standard deviations below, etc. This is one standard deviation above, two standard deviations above. So we can see that it's a little bit more than one standard deviation on both sides. And so we would write this down. This would be our standardized test statistic, and I do have a video that shows you how to um, calculate this value, what the formula is in case you need to show work. And this is our p-value. So let's go ahead and write down our important information. So I'm going to go ahead and shade a little bit more than one standard deviation below and a little bit more than one standard deviation above. And so I would say that my z, for this one, our z, because it was positive, I'm going to say that Z is 1.1785. And my p-value represents the area that I shaded. So my p-value, half of it is on the right-hand side and half of it is on the left-hand side, represents 0.2386. Let me just verify my numbers that I have written on my paper. Okay, so 0.28386 is my p-value, and now I'm going to compare that to alpha. So we always compare these two values together. So we're going to look at our p-value and we're going to look at our alpha. And since our p-value of 2386 is greater than alpha of 0 0.10, we would fail to reject our null hypothesis. So in a properly run 
hypothesis test, we would interpret our decision in the context of the problem. But in this case, since I don't have any context, I just gave you the null and the alternative, all we would write down is our decision rule. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.